Good afternoon and welcome to Newman Arena in Bartels Hall on the campus of Cornell University, where today we're going to announce the brand new Robert E. Gallagher, class of 44, head coach of Cornell men's basketball, John Jakes, class 2010. <laughs> A special thank you to all that are here in the arena and also to all those across the country and around the world watching right now on CornellBigRed.com. To kick us off, I'm going to introduce uh, Ryan Lombardi, the Vice President for Student and Campus Life here at Cornell University. Thanks, Jeremy. Good afternoon, everyone. Great to see you. Thank you for being here. It's a super special day, and thanks to all who are watching online, too. We appreciate it. I'm assuming there's cameras out there, right? So. Um, I am so delighted to be here with you today as we introduce John and give a big red kind of welcome or new gig kind of thing to, uh, to John as our new Robert Gallagher class of 44 head coach of Cornell men's basketball. And a special welcome to John's family too. I just had a chance to meet Doug and Susan, his parents and his wife and the two beautiful kids. So we're glad they're here and congratulations to you too. Lots of fun stuff coming. Um, as you all know, intercollegiate athletics is an integral part of the student experience here at Cornell. It was really important for me to be here today to celebrate that. The coaches, the athletes in the room would tell you that it's about a lot of things. It's about the competition, the team effort towards shared goals, the thrill of the game, of course, but so much more too. What's accomplished outside of the, outside of the arena, off of the court, the community, the discipline, the trust, the respect and the growth is invaluable as a part of the Cornell experience and we're so grateful to have this kind of a experience here at Cornell. And I know I speak for those in the room when I say it is incredibly rewarding to see a former student athlete, former Cornellian, and always Cornellian, on arguably the most successful team in this particular sport's history, return to Cornell to create the same invaluable experience for all of the student athletes today. It's truly a full circle moment for John and for, for Big Red Basketball for sure. Now, I do have one confession to make. One of my graduate degrees is from Kansas. I worked at Duke for nearly eight years. I've been a part of some pretty special college basketball atmospheres in my lifetime, but I must say that the energy we felt here in Newman Arena this spring, or this, uh, this past season, um, was pretty special. Uh, shout out to all the guys uh, for your efforts. Amazing season, really proud, and the energy in the, in the arena was amazing. So we'll, we're going to try and keep that up in the next uh, in the next go. Keep that rolling. And John, your dedication to this team, first as a student athlete, then a, as a part of the coaching staff, and now as the head coach of the program, we are so looking forward to all that you'll continue to do for this team and for Cornell. Um, we've got your back, and we're with you, and we look forward to seeing all that comes in the coming years. We'll be in the bleachers cheering you on and behind the scenes as well. So to share a little bit more about John and our commitment to the next chapter here, I'm going to introduce uh, our Mecham Smith Director of Athletics, Dr. Nikki Moore. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Ryan. We are so fortunate in athletics and physical education at Cornell to have leadership that supports us, that cheers us on, that is present, um, and that uh, with whom we can partner to really deliver on the promise of Cornell in terms of the student experience and certainly uh, the, the basketball team uh, this year has contributed greatly to that. So, um, you know, this is uh, such a pleasure to get to be here and thank you so much to all of you for showing up and for welcoming and for celebrating uh, John and celebrating this program and, and really celebrating all that Cornell and Big Red Athletics does uh, for this community. Uh, this is a program that, that does have some, some really rich history. Um, this uh, men's basketball program is uh, home to nine All-Americans, six COSIDA Academic All-Americans, and three Ivy League Players of the Year. And the current team, the current program in recent history um, is handed off in, in good and strong fashion. Um, we're grateful to former head coach Brian Earle for leaving the program in a good position and for the mentoring that he has done with his staff and with John in particular. Um, this year, uh, we, uh, we finished second place in the Ivy League, the highest since 2009 and 10, qualified for the tournament for the third consecutive year. Um, got 22 wins, tied for the second most in school history. Um, only behind, I believe, the team that John played on, um, 
the first ever invitation to the NIT. Uh, we had a first team all Ivy and Chris Mannon, uh, Nas Williams score, it was the second team all Ivy. And the team, while doing all of that, has succeeded academically. This team has a fantastic 3.3 um, team average GPA, which is incredible. Um, and yes. <laughs> and that's what Cornell Athletics is about. We provide the highest possible oper experience academically and athletically, and these guys are living that every day, and we're so grateful to them and uh, excited about what's to come in this program. So uh, let me say a few thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you so much to our search committee, um, specifically to Laura Segreshi, who has, as our senior uh, deputy athletics director, who has been um, tirelessly working alongside me with um, four searches, uh, and uh, and so we're I'm really grateful to you, Laura. Thank you. Um, also, Amy Foster and Larry Quant, the sport administrator for men's basketball, Jeremy Hardigan and Jackie Mendez, all served on the committee and and did great work um, for uh, and, and hard work for a condensed amount of time. Um, special thanks also to Mike Gray and Patty Grace, who were critical participants in the process. And our student athlete search advisory group, Guy, Nas, Cooper, Josh, AK, Jacob, and Jake, um, you all did a great job of helping us to understand um, what was so special about this program. And we listened and, and really searched for that in this process. Also, thank you to our alumni search advisory group members. Um, there were, there were uh, quite a few who participated and, and gave us that historical context and, um, and I'll have to say made it awfully clear who they thought ought to be the head coach. Um, and a special thanks to, to Rich Booth and Gary Munson and Mike Troy, who have really helped position this program and through this transition for continued success. And um, we really appreciate you too. So the search. We really were looking for all of our candidates for alignment, um, again, with our mission to inspire transformation through athletics, to pursue our purposes of winning wellness, spirit, and leadership. We evaluated 52 candidates, researched extensively, interviewed many more, and um, we really were looking for candidates who were curious, who had a growth mindset, who had a high character, high degree of integrity, um, and uh, you, you're perfect right there, Karina. Actually, yeah, you're welcome to be in my seat. I don't mind at all. Um, you're a good replacement. Um, we were looking for somebody that was hardworking. You all, the coaches here, know that Cornell is not for the faint of heart. You got to work hard here, and we're not afraid of that. And we were looking for somebody that was not afraid of doing that hard work, um, a drive to the and a desire to recruit and develop players, resilient, up for the challenges that can come here. Um, creative and competitive with a sharp intellect and enough courage to try new ways to compete within an incredibly competitive Ivy League basketball uh, landscape. Committed to the student athlete well-being and to building an inclusive program where student athletes and fans alike from all walks of life can invest in and be a vital part of the success of this program. We were looking for a leader who has the ability and passion to position their staff, student athletes, and other colleagues here in the department to be their very best and to inspire them to pursue excellence. And finally, a passion for Cornell. I think the first conversation that John and I had after we knew that we were gonna be in a basketball search um, was maybe the same day or the next day, maybe, but I think the first thing that he said to me was, there is no one who cares about Cornell basketball as much as I do. And he showed us that through this search, um, and has showed us that through his, his life and his, his experiences. So the competition was steep. I'm really pleased to, sh to report that there is no shortage of highly qualified coaches and candidates who think this is a really special job. So as a player, our new coach was a four-year member of the Big Red basketball team who toiled largely um, in practice for three years but stuck it out and was, he's the guy that embodies next man up. He was ready for the opportunity when it came and he earned a starting position and was a captain his senior year. That team over his four years won three outright Ivy League titles. He won, they won a record 29 games that special year in 2010 um, and made it to the NCAA Sweet 16 
And that moment is one I've heard many times. It's a story I continue to be told from before I got here to the yesterday about where I was um, when we went to the Sweet 16. And, and he was a critical part of that team. It's a moment, again, that's solidified here. Um, he knows a thing or two about winning. Personal characteristics. Not only did the committee take note of the deep well of strong personal characteristics that we believe will support his success, but we heard from student athletes on the team now and from our alums about his personal commitment to every student athlete that passes through this program. His meticulous uh, approach to scouting and uh, to, to educating his team about what they're up against. His relentless drive to recruit highly athletically and academically talented student athletes who also have high character. And his curiosity, his poise, his good humor and approachable personality. He also comes to us with the support of an incredible family. His parents in from uh, the West Coast. I had the great opportunity to spend some time with Jasmine and learned a little bit about their story. And there's nothing, there's nothing that says Cornell couple than the Daily Sun is how they met. Um, so, uh, so that's right. Um, Jasmine was an editor on the Daily Sun at the time. John himself was on the editorial board and wrote for the sports opinion area. So um, we have found an incredible coach and I'm so excited to build Cornell basketball with him. We found one that has all the things we were looking for and more and so excited to commence this new era of Cornell men's basketball. And so it is my honor and privilege to welcome the 23rd head men's basketball coach in Cornell history, the Robert E. Gallagher, class of 44, head coach, John Jakes. back of the jersey. These guys have been cl clamoring for it for, for years. Um, just so I, I don't know that's happening next year, for the, for the, for the record. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I appreciate it so much. And I want to begin uh, with a handful of very important thank yous. Um, first, thank you to Dr. Nikki Moore, Senior Deputy Athletic Director Laura Segreshi, Deputy Athletic Director Larry Quant, and the rest of the search committee um, for this unbelievable opportunity you've entrusted me with uh, to be a leader of a program that means so much to me and has given me so much in my life. I'm eternally grateful, um, but also just for the whole search process itself and you know the time you spent at a really crazy time for the department, right? Searches and beyond that, like teams doing amazing things, championship seasons, right? Like it's a crazy time, but you guys spent the, you invested in time to get to know me and my vision for the program, right? And so I, I really do appreciate it. And I told Nikki this, I think I told Laura, and I'm, I'm dead serious. The last few weeks have been just crazy personally and emotionally and not without stress and unknowns. You know, but they've also been like fun, right? M most of the time they've been fun. Um, to be able to go through it, to crystallize my vision for the program, um, like zoom in, think about our guys, like what they could, what they could be, where they could go, and, and my thoughts for them in the future, and then to zoom out and think about the program as a whole and the university and what this program I think can mean for everyone here. Um, so that whole process was just was just really exciting for me. So thank you, Nikki, for running, and Laura for running this kind of search, like with such professionalism and giving me the chance to to be as genuine as I can be about uh, about this place and this program. And thank you to Vice President Ryan Lombardi, of course, for being here today. I really appreciate it, and the whole University Administration just for your support and appre appreciating the value athletics and basketball can bring. I mean, clearly. Your support throughout the season meant a lot. Saw you making noise behind the bench, and hopefully you can black out some of the, the words that were coming out of my mouth. I black out sometimes during games, too. So 
Um, they've never heard any of that before. They don't, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, you know, a few more thank yous. Sorry, I, I won't take too long. I, I have some amazing mentors who have enabled me to be here in this position. You know, first, Steve Donahue, many of you here know him pretty well. You know, recruited me to Cornell, opened this door for me to have this life-changing student athlete experience. Um, so forever grateful, but also for kind of the, the model he showed me at, at what a coach mentor could be. You know, like, it's beyond, he's a great coach, unfortunately, he's also in our league still, so that's, that's fine, but it's beyond that. Like, there, me and my former teammates have such admiration for him as, as a person and a leader. Um, so he's in our lives, he's at our weddings, constantly checking in, and that's something I aspire to, you know, in, in my future with these guys here. So thank you to Coach D. Uh, Kyle Smith, thank you to him. Uh, you know, I was only at Columbia with him for one, for one year with him and his just incredible coaching staff that's gone on to do amazing things. But despite being only there one year, they've all kind of treated me like one of their own just forever. Um, and they're just in incredibly smart, caring, thoughtful, supportive people, mentors for me. So uh, I appreciate them and their help throughout the last you know, 10 years I've been coaching, but um, just their mentorship and throughout this process as well. I want to thank Bill Courtney. Um, he took a chance on me and hired me here uh, to return to this place that I, that I love, even though I had very little experience and he didn't know me very well at all. So I'm going through the coaching staff search myself now and I appreciate even more the leap of faith he took. You know, like it, it's, to do what he did is hard, and to give me that opportunity is special. So I just want to thank him. Um, all, all my coaching colleagues that I've had here at Cornell, right, uh, basketball staff-wise, um, you guys know who you are, and uh, especially the guys the last few years. Like, we know, as Nikki said, to make things, spe special things happen here, you have to work hard, right, and, and be creative. And these guys know a few of the guys I'm referencing. And we all worked really hard to build this thing to where it is. And so um, thank you all for making me a better coach and leader. And thank you for your friendship. And you guys, hey, hey buddy, <laughs> you guys are all a huge part of this. Uh, so I, I appreciate, you know, hopefully some of you are watching. I appreciate you guys very much. Uh, and finally, you know, Brian Earl, the country knows how, how good of a coach he is now, which we've all known for a while. Um, so I think some of that's rubbed off on me the past eight years. Um, but he's, he's that good of a person too, right? And I think watching him um, embrace this role, but also embrace being a father and a husband in that time was just as valuable for me as I take this next step, you know? Those who know him know he's kind of like a unicorn in this business, just in terms of like natural sense of work-life balance. And that's not many are like that. Uh, care and love for his family, priority in being a father, thoughtfulness in dealing with his staff and what we're going through in our lives outside of work. And so all of it was refreshing and so appreciated um, as we, you know, Jasmine and I raise our family here. And um, so I just appreciate him for that model for me, like very, very much. Um, so that brings me to my family. <laughs> uh, so my wife, Jasmine, as, as Nikki mentioned, uh, my children, Karina and Micah, are here in the incredible bow tie in the front. Um, <laughs> we all, so I'll try not to get too emotional, but we, we, all, we all know the, the toll and sacrifice, right? Like um, coaching requires from families, okay? And I, I don't want to label Jasmine as a coach's wife because she, she, she's so much more than that, right? She's an incredible person and but none of it's possible without Jasmine's selflessness and, and her toughness like those are two things that I talk about a lot but um, it's hard it's hard to to be a wife of a coach who spends as much time as we do doing this and so just her love dedication support commitment through ups and, and like a lot of downs too um, it's really inspiring, so I can't thank you enough for everything. Um, the kids, uh, Micah, I, I thank you for having a relatively good night of sleep last night. 
Jasmine, Jasmine's like, no, he, no, but like, I appreciate it because I can function a little bit right now. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, Micah, I know, yeah. Uh, and Karina, I just, I want to thank you, sweetie, for, thank you. So this is what I'm talking to you right now. Uh, so how much enthusiasm you have just for, for, for life and everything, but this, this program and our, our guys, like, she loves you guys. She may love the cheerleaders more right now. So something to work on, okay, for me too. Um, but uh, yeah, I, just, I, I appreciate, Karina, I appreciate how much you love being around and I wanna do it more, you know. Um, and I know some of the season, it gets, it's hard. Like I think this year you start to realize that I'm not, yeah, <laughs> that I'm not around sometimes, right? Um, and so I know it's hard to understand why I want to travel to Dartmouth and Harvard in February, <laughs> possibly in the middle of a blizzard. Um, but hopefully when these guys come back, you know, and they talk about all the great things they've done and they're doing and they have families and it'll make a little more sense, hopefully, why, why I'm doing this, okay? Um, my family back home in Southern California, especially my parents, of course, Doug and Susan Jakes, they're here today. Um, you probably didn't think you'd be spending so much time in Ithaca when you sent me off here 18 years ago. Um, but like, th thank you, seriously, like for, for me to be able to pursue this and this dream, uh, it's not possible without your support and love and just everything. So appreciate you guys um, and everyone watching back home. Thank you. Um, thank you to my former teammates. You guys shaped my experience here. Um, you know, made me want to do this this coaching part of it because of what we had, right? Help, help these guys experience what we, we have had and have going forward in the rest of our lives, right? Not necessarily about the results, which as Nikki mentioned, we're pretty good, um, but it's about like sharing memories, right? Um, struggles, celebrations with people you care about. So that, that's why you're on a team, right? So I've talked about that with these guys before and I, I mean it. So me being up here is a, a hopefully a reflection uh, and testament to all each of you put into this program. So thank you. Um, and lastly, thank you to, to you guys, the current players, and also all the guys who I've coached since I, I've come back here. Um, thank you for your, your dedication, your effort, and like eagerness to build meaningful relationships with me. Cause it's, it's a, it's a two way street, you know, like you have to have good people who wanna, wanna create something. So thank you. And, and your support through the process these last few weeks just means the world, the world to me. Like seriously, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Seriously. Um, okay, thank yous are over. Um, <laughs> finally, sorry. Uh, so I'm fired up, right? Clearly, and just, just believe in the immense potential of this place, right? Um, it's for many of the same reasons that drew me to Cornell as a high school recruit in the first place. Okay. We all know Cornell offers a world-class academic experience, a one-of-a-kind one campus, top college town in the country, and you know, most importantly, a kind of community that makes you feel like you're having a truly well-rounded, like vibrant college experience. That's what I wanted coming out of high school to feel that way, and I, and I still feel that way. We're, we're like a, a unique place in college athletics for us college basketball, okay? So I am just could not be fired up to be in this position, more fired up to be in this position. <clears throat> there are incredible people here outside of our little bubble in basketball athletics, changing the world every day, you know, which is exciting. A student and campus life division that's invested in the growth and well-being of all the students here. An athletic department and staff support system that, that cares and takes pride in supporting one another. And I should thank you all too, the last few weeks, you know, like, I know a lot of you didn't know how to talk to me because you didn't know what I was doing and if I was trying to get the job and I know it's, it's hard, but like, thank you for all the support, seriously. Like, I really, really appreciate it. Um, there's an alumni support system that's like large and passionate and, and through its generosity wants to find ways to really make an impact on student athletes' experiences here, uh, which is unique, I think. And a student body and community that truly gets into things, like really gets into it wants to celebrate athletics and successful athletics 
and in my experience as a player and now as a coach, like seems to show out and appreciate really good basketball, right? And it's, it's something that we should be all celebrating and excited about how much the community likes watching these guys play. And that same community, Jasmine and I have found, is an amazing place to start a family, make amazing friends, and put down roots, and we look forward to developing even stronger relationships here going forward. Um, so when I first came to Cornell, not, like, not unlike many first-year players, I thought I was like ready to go, like ready to play, ready to get on the court, compete. Um, and most of you know me, I'm not like, you know, I, I'm not so, my, I don't have the largest ego in the world. <laughs> so, like, I, I thought I was ready though, based on my experience. Um, came from a very competitive high school, um, played with and against very good players, high major talent, some all NBA level talent. So I stepped foot on campus and, you know, we had pickup during orientation before you can start doing official things with coaches just to get in shape for the freshman gets to know the team. Um, and so I was like ready to go. This would be awesome. And uh, so most people here know Ryan Whitman and Lewis Dale, right? My classmates. Yeah. <laughs> Two of the best players in the Ivy League history, not just Cornell history. Um, and they were awesome that pickup. But the guy I remember the most standing out was Jeff Reeves. Only a few people here know who Jeff Reeves is. Um, <laughs> um, so similar size to me, build, like skinny, a little shorter. Came from a small town in Kansas. You know, I'm still, I'm, I'm confident, ready to go. And Jeff is just like drilling threes, like Kobe fadeaways, insane athlete, dunking on everyone. And I, I the upperclassmen clearly had some some girth on me too, and I was getting thrown around, and you guys know, like, you're not ready for it. And I was just like, I may not play here for a while, basically, was my thought, leaving the gym. Um, and I didn't know, I didn't know it would be three years of not playing at the time, you know. Um, but that's where my journey took me, and, I, and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for it because of everything I learned along the way. Um, being a part of an amazing group with amazing people and doing it for something larger than yourself, right? Like, it, it made it worth it to me. And I, I've told these guys before, like, it's so worth it to, to be, to invest in that, okay? And you don't have to go three years without playing, hopefully, to, to learn the lesson, but that was my, my path. So in, in practice, most of my mindset, honestly, was just coming ready to make Ryan Whitman's life miserable. For, for three years, I'm dead serious. Um, and he knows it too, so I don't know if he's watching, but uh, like push him, like literally push him, uh, foul him, you know, make him earn everything, just go as hard as I could. And I, I knew he and our team was better off for it. And in hindsight, what I realize now is the most important part of all of that uh, was my coaches and teammates doing an amazing job making me feel valued and celebrated in that role like that's and that stuck with me and what I try to get across to these guys right here like it, it's everyone's got a purpose in the program okay and because it, it my my group coaches and teammates made me feel that way um, so senior year a couple injuries illnesses you know a few guys went down literally and I was the last guy left <laughs> um, and uh, I had an opportunity, was ready, ran with it, and the rest is history. But what people forget is Alex Tyler, one of my classmates, very good friends. You know, he, he, I took his starting spot. And it was never given back after he became healthy. Right? And so he's one of the most competitive people I know. Um, and I, so I know it burned him, you know? <laughs> But he never did a thing but support me and do what he needed to do for the team to have success the rest of the year. Um, so what, what I'm trying to, to get at, if it's not clear, is that all, all these experiences as a player shape my philosophy as much as my coaching experience does. And my path as a coach has kind of been pretty similar to that as a player. 
you know, um, I, I hope these career arcs hopefully show, you know, patience, persistence, loyalty, commitment, effort, unselfishness can take you a long way, all right? Um, so with some of that in mind, I know certain things work here and it worked for me to this point, okay? So going forward, this program, it's not gonna be so earth shattering and different than it has been, but I, we're gonna talk about certain things. First, effort and competitiveness. Okay, like no one will play harder than us when we're on the court, okay? When people leave the gym after watching us play, it should be clear who the harder playing team was, right? Like effort-wise, competitively. Um, and that goes off the court too, right? Like effort and everything you're doing. Um, unselfishness, okay, secondly. Um, we're all gonna prioritize being teammates and putting what's good for the group first, right? Um, we want to celebrate our teammate successes and on the court, you know, we're celebrate plays, actions that require you to think outside yourself. So passing, you know, obviously assists and help defense, communication. Um, if you're a smaller person, being willing to like box out and hit the 6'11 dude charging down the, down the paint, that's not fun and you may get hurt but you're doing it for your, your boys, okay? And off the court, clearly, like, that is even more important going forward, right? Caring for people around us, thinking of people in this community um, when you graduate going forward, thinking outside yourself. And then just among other things, last thing I want to touch on is, like, spirit, okay? Like, clearly that's important in our mission as a department. Um, but for me personally, just, and we talked about this the other day, just passion for the program an appreciation for the awesome opportunity we all have to be here at like one of the best universities in the world. And then just resilience when things don't go our way, right? Like we know there's bigger things than basketball, right, that happen, right? And so how do we react um, when it doesn't go our way? That, that's important and we'll be about it. But yeah, pride in the program, the university, connections we have to everyone who came before us. Like I, I wanna, be about that, okay? Um, so our guys sitting here, and you know the few who aren't here, they all embody those values right now, okay? And that's a, that, that's truly the main reason for our success these past few years, okay? And why the program sits in such an exciting place. Okay? It's about these guys, and, and you know, the guys who came before them who graduated. These guys and the way they play and have come together to play a pretty unique style and selfless style um, has people talking, right? From our fans to our opponents, right? Like people notice. Um, Cornell people everywhere should be proud of what these guys have accomplished to this point. And having said that, and the message I've shared with the team, <laughs> I know, it's getting long, I know. I didn't, I didn't think it would be this long. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've shared the message with these guys that it's just a launching point for things to come, right? Um, in terms of on-court success, of course, but just excitement within the community, creative engagement with our alumni, okay? Just collaboration uh, and collaboration between all facets of our department to make the vision possible, right? It's just the beginning. Uh, part, in, part of that, a week ago, had an awesome chat with our uh, alumni advisory committee who helped in the search, and I want to thank all of them. Uh, some very, very familiar faces <laughs> on that call, and others I was just talking to for the first or second time. But the common thread was that we're all, you know, former players from different areas of Cornell who wore the jersey, have great love and connection to this place. Um, and in my experience, Cornellians have a, a uniquely passionate relationship with our alma mater, okay? And very few folks come away from this place not looking back on this time, like, fondly, uh, as some of the best years of their life, okay? And so my, my hope is our alumni, former players, supporters, will be just as proud to be part of the Cornell men's basketball family as they are to be part of the Cornell University family. That's, that's a huge part of this. Um, it says something, I think, that 
about the current state and status of the program, that a former player who became an assistant, kind of was patient, worked his way up, is here addressing you as the head coach. Like the program is in, is elevated to a, a pretty good place, and we should be proud of it, not because of me, but because of like everything that's that's going on. Okay, it's an exciting time. No matter how many games you won or lost, or how many, no matter who your coach was or when you graduated. Um, we're all Cornell basketball, we're all connected, and we're all, this is, this is home, right? We're all welcome here. And so I really wanna bring everyone in the fold here to celebrate Cornell basketball together. That's like part, part of this going forward, the vision. Um, so I look forward to connecting consistently and, and genuinely with all of our alumni and share, share with you specific ways you can support the upward momentum of the program and impact these guys' experiences, which is like why, why we're all doing this. So th that's it. <laughs> Th thank you for your time, seriously. Like, I'm so grateful, everyone here. Um, it's a Friday, I know everyone has things to do. So like, I really appreciate it so much. Um, grateful for the opportunity. Can't wait for what's next. And uh, to everyone here and watching at home today, to our administration, just promise, you know, our players, my staff, um, we're gonna strive to get better every day and, uh, and make everyone extremely proud. So thank you again. So we do have time for a couple of questions, if we have any in the audience. Uh, if you do, please raise your hand. Marshall will come over to you with the microphone. First of all, congrats, Coach. I know we're all really excited that you got this job, and uh, we are rooting for you, so I just want to say thank you for the past three years, and also I'm excited to continue to watch um, in the future. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't even have a question. I just wanted to <laughs> raise my hand. What? Um, but I'm going to think of one right now. Um, <laughs> man, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, my question is, um, you know, with the kind of uh, brand we've been developing, at least since I've been here in the past three, four years of uh, – been something that you know has been I'm sure we've all heard a lot from it from just people in Cornell but also beyond Cornell um, how do you envision kind of I know you spoke on some of our like our team morals and you know, our ethics but how do you envision on you know deepening this Cornell brand and kind of just making it more of a household name um, that we've already kind of started to establish um, in these past couple years great question um, <laughs> So, I mean, with the success we've had, this is very close to my mouth, with the success we've had, I, I think things will look similar in a lot of ways. Um, but, you know, it, we're, as a coach, you constantly evaluate what's best for the, the team to, <laughs> you know, to, to get one more point than, the, than our opponent, right? So, um, since you're sitting with everyone, you guys are going to grow and change and um, hopefully have a, a good off season, <laughs> work hard. And so that's all taken into account. Um, so yeah, there will be similar ideas and, and similar ways we want to play and what we value on the court. Um, and I think the guys are doing workouts this week. We've started to talk a little bit about it, but um, you have a few new guys coming in and we don't know what they're going to bring. So. I'm open to anything as long as it works. And so I think uh, hopefully you guys like playing this way. <laughs> you guys are here and have had some success, so there'll be some similarities, but i um, open to whatever works, basically. So coach, you've been a member of this community now since 2006 as a player, as a, an assistant coach, and now the head coach. You've been around some great coaches. Can you, you, you talked about Steve Donahue and Bill Courtney and some other coaches that have influenced you. Can you talk about some non-basketball coaches that you've been uh, colleagues of who have 
contributed to some of your philosophy relative to coaching? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think um, I want to get out there more, Matt Coates, but the noon hoops run is probably a good, good uh, seriously, a, a good atmosphere for how to pick your brain, how to pick the brains of some of the people here. And we have some awesome, um, awesome minds who know how to think creatively. Um, but yeah, like our hockey staff, of course, Mike Schaefer and, you know, John Smith, what he's doing with soccer and their assistants, their lacrosse, like those guys are fun to talk to um, because, I mean, th every sport is different, but team sports at least, um, we're all, you're, you're involved with other people and like spacing and ideas and that's just on the court, but like how to motivate people and how to recruit at Cornell and those conversations are really valuable. So I think everyone here has something to offer. Um, Cornell is different. It's in, in most, mostly very good ways, but to figure out what works here is important. And so conversations with all of our colleagues uh, have been extremely beneficial to me in my, in my career here. Hey coach, congratulations over here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you would know as much as, as well as anybody the importance of assistant coaches. What are your thoughts as you try to build your staff? What, you, what priorities are you looking for to round out your strengths and, and so forth? Yeah, thanks. Um, I mean, I, I think about, and it doesn't have to be exactly the same, of course, but um, what's worked for us recently here and, you know, as an assistant and what, and the people we worked with. Um, and it's been hungry, hungry people who, you know, obviously want to, work hard, that's hopefully a given, but people who really want to be on the, on the floor with the guys, you know, uh, recruiting is important and being creative and aggressive and understanding Cornell is clearly going to be part of it, but I, I want to bring in people who are going to enjoy working with these guys. They're hard not to enjoy being with, but who will be out there with them and engage in getting them better. I think that's a huge part of our success like these guys care about basketball a lot a and they they are always you know hitting up uh, hitting us up as coaches and want to get in the gym and work and I want people who l love that you know and aren't like oh like I gotta go you know just people who are about it and when these guys want to get in the gym it's like intentional work with the the goal of making them them better basketball players and of course develop really good relations with relationships with them off the court too. So I think that's the most important thing for me. Okay, last question. You spent many years with this team, and now that you're officially at the helm, what do you want the identity of Cornell men's basketball to be? Thank you. Great question. Yeah, I mean, I think just we, like I said, be a group that plays without question for, for each other. Um, I think if you asked people the last few years, um, that was part of it, and I want to continue it. Just incredibly unselfish, hard-playing people. And so to continue, the, the numbers back it up. I mean, we have been one of the top teams in terms of like assist percentage, and um, we finished second in the country in two-point field percentage this year, which is a reflection of how much we enjoy getting easy shots for each other. So that's our identity, like unselfishness on both ends valuing that, playing for each other, and hopefully the rest takes care of itself after that, but I think that's a good place to start. Yeah. Well, thank you all for being here today. Uh, we can all uh, agree that it's an exciting day for Cornell basketball. From here, we're going to invite all of you to a reception over in the Kaplan family room. Uh, so we will be there in just a couple minutes. So thank you guys for being here. We look forward to seeing you in November when the 2024-25 season kicks off. So thanks so much.